Hello everyone, and welcome back to Make Believe, where we're playing the house in Fata Morgana. Last time we had um, Bestia, or Yukimasa, uh, relieving some of his memories when he was in captain in the captain ship on um, Pauline's father's ship, and how he had this sadistic tendencies back then, and with the silver hair maiden also giving some reasoning of why he must be human and how did the why did the villagers treat him that way he's also conflicted because that means he what that means there is also the consequence of what he did to the other bestia but right now she's feeling sick and he went to the village to try to get some medicine for her so things are ramping up the fruit Future fies. Ooh. He regretted not asking the fruit vendor how long the party set off. Oh, right. I think they were gonna go to the mansion to attack while he was away. Though, what good would that knowledge have done him? He had to hurry back regardless. The sun was beginning to set, draping the surroundings to the deep blackness. So are they gonna kill the girl? As if to keep him from returning home, the knight wrapped his hand around his head, hovering both eyes. In what direction did he have to had to return to the mansion? He was getting lost. He stormed through the forest, and eventually, the mansion appeared before him, like the world fading to view after a dream. And this music, though, is very much building up. Bestia was a tempest in the night, blowing through the overgrowth towards the house. Please, please, make it in time. I, I need her. I need the peace that she provides me. The last thing I want is for her to die. In the blink of an eye, he was through the door. Charging down the mansion's halls. The, the fact that he, he could not sense anyone else inside, though. Yeah, makes me believe that he's too late. All he could hear was the whoosh of the wind blowing to the house from somewhere. It seemed a window was open. Where are you? Where have you gone? Answer me. Please answer me. He cried out the girl's name. Again and again, until his throat was sore and his voice hoarse. And we really did not get her name, huh? But she did not respond. He rushed into her bedchamber. Hey! Hey! Hello! Where are you? Where are you? Answer me! The man swung his head back and forth so hard he thought he might break his own neck. And when he made to look down, he slipped, falling on his tailbone. And why did he slip? He felt something slick on his hands, a sensation he would recognize anywhere. I imagine that's blood. The liquid was still warm. Yup. No, that cannot be. We can't. We can't. We cannot be. Muttering incomprehensibly in fear, he crawled back to the door of her chamber and into the corridor. Like a genuine beast, he followed the trail slippery fluid on all fours. The trail glimmered like red wine. It stretched down the hall, past the living room, mirrored across the floor like it had been wiped down with a mop. I'm just waiting for the scene. The man crawled and crawled and crawled. Until at last, he reached the stairs leading down to the cellar. Was it in the cellar that the maid found him? The ruby trail continued. From beyond the door, he could hear men's voices. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. 
with a howl, he, the men stumbled down the stairs, throwing open the wooden door. His first impression was that the stench of blood was suffocating. Ironic, isn't it? And indeed, there he discovered the white-haired girl. Ugh. Ugh. He found himself unable to even scream. Oh, all the red? Her once porcelain skin was no longer even sickly pale. It was now the color, the, the bloodless color of dirt. She was sprawled haphazardly out on the cellar floor. Dried blood stained around her half-open mouth, and those lips were, naturally, lacking their former rosin sheen. Her body was covered with an array of wounds, but the most prominent is the man's singular sword standing tall in her chest. This is the Bastia. He doesn't look like the same. It's him. Well, Javi. Yeah. He's the same guy. He's the Bastia. Several villagers surrounded him at the behest of a young boy. So, I mean, I'm guessing Javi helped them up to come here after Pauline's death. Like, that gave him the courage for it. He's got himself dressed up all proper and fancy, but good clothes don't make him a good man. Isn't that right, you bestia? No. You murderer! Uh, uh, a lie. Why? Why did you kill her? 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 Why? You want to know why? Her death was an accident, I'd say. I feel bad about what happened. But any woman who would live for men like you must be a witch. Does that hurt? Are you hurting right now, you bestia? And maybe now you understand. You. You not only stole my parents and friends from me, you ripped the last shard of hope I had from my hands. Do you get it? Do you finally understand how I feel? Now do you know how it feels to have someone you care about taken from you? He, Pauline, was desperately trying to find you. And he called her Pauline. Not Miss or Polly. Why? Why would you kill someone so devoted to you? Do you understand what you've done? I'm asking you a question, you goddamn murderer. Let's see. And now, I have nothing left. What? The man stepped forward, almost perfectly calm. His panic had vanished, as if it were never there. His eyes were sternly vacant. Perhaps the sorrow had overpowered him, beating his heart into quiet submission. No, no, that was not the case. Though his eyes were empty, a faint smile spread across his lips. And I feel like he's gonna be going on a murder spree. The transition was swift, as though a gear had switched in his mind. The boy and the other villagers were frowned in place at the sight. Before long, the man was standing before the deceased girl's body. Either he's gonna go on a killing spree, a mad killing spree and kill all of them, or he's gonna take him himself out. And then, he pulled the blade from her chest. I knew it. I really was a beast. And what it wanted was a theater. What are you yammering on about? Didn't, didn't you care about that woman? Didn't you choose her over Pauline? Who you threw aside and butchered? What? What is wrong with you? 
Well, what was she to you? She was my serenity. She's dead now. There's nothing you can do about that. Peace. All. Tranquility. <laughs> and man's behavior was downright eerie, causing the boy to flinch back. Believing he'd had everything taken from him, could not possibly lose anything more was, I imagine, what had allowed them to stand up to the beast, the source of such crippling fear. Yet now, he found himself unable to move. He found himself, in the face of such an incomprehensible creature, paralyzed with fear. And the villagers were similarly dumbstruck. Not even I could understand his behavior. What the... What the hell is wrong with you? How can you laugh at this? Forget it. How... How indeed. I wonder myself. <laughs> I don't know he. But you know what? It doesn't matter anymore. Because every last one of my anchors has broken off and sunken into the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Get moving. Kill him. I'll slaughter every last one of you. Ah, uh, yes. And there it is. My whole life. I've always. What did you kill? Ooh. That shot. What was it that afflicted you with such madness? Losing your memory in the shipwreck? The abuse and insult you suffered at the villager's hand? Or was it your grief in not being able to return to your homeland? No. None of those were the roots. You were. You were always like this. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how he had those sadistic tendencies on the ship. You always bore those twisted desires. You held it deep. Constant urges to cause others harm. That is your essence. The real you. Hidden beneath the mask of sincerity. The true beast was your heart. The beast was a convenient hint for your you to wear. You wanted to be a brutal, savage murderer. You never really loved the white haired girl, or the black haired woman for that matter. You were merely attached to them, fixated on the idea of a world of tranquility. You used this peace to anchor yourself. To prevent you from drifting off into the ocean of your desires. You yearn to cause pain, while also hungering for the opposite, a calm life. You idolize this idealized life, spent in quiet harmony with another, because you knew just how difficult it would be for you to attain. Far more difficult to you than satisfying your cravings, but not impossible. I, personally, had hoped you would find peace with someone rather than descend into savagery. It may have only been superficial, but it would have been very human. But ultimately, he slipped through your fingers, and no one was left to press your desires. You cannot, after all, hold them back yourself. What a tragic man. What a hopeless man you are. Weeping Manor. And I'm guessing we're at the end of the second chapter. The door to the cellar swung shut. You had fallen to the floor at some point, unable to bear the stench of blood. The maid stood behind you, 
her arms wrapped around your shoulders. The maid's voice was chillingly gentle. That was quite horrific, wasn't it? Are you feeling unwell, Master? Oh my, shaking, Master. Fear not, I assure you, the beast will not come through that door. I am here for you, and I will continue to hold you for as long as you need to settle your nerves. Oh dear, you feel like you might freeze in my arms? Am I really that cold? Hmm. Not warm blood going through you, I see. No reflection. Living for centuries. I wonder what could that mean? I cannot tell my own temperature. <laughs> you wish to know what happened to Bestia after that? I could open the door once more and show you. <laughs> but I have no intention of knowingly tossing you back into that den of horrors. He lost the rest of his humanity. He became wholly beast. But... Hmm. Oh, just a little more of the tale. It is my understanding that an entire village was ravaged shortly thereafter. He was a bewitchingly talented swordsman, after all. Not a single person leaving that village to stand up to him. In the woman's memory, he saw, he was a gentle man, yes. But even the mildest of men can change. Though presently, I believe that we found an element of monstro monstrousness buried somewhere within. Men cannot become a beast, regardless of what may push him in that direction. <clears throat> Do you follow? <laughs> Tell me, Master. Have you remembered anything? Dear, I was afraid of that. I am a remarkably patient maid. I will accompany you for as long as you require, no matter how many decades or centuries that takes. So do please find your memories. Now let's head to the next door. Chapter 3. Mansion is quite large, so hold on to my hand. You would not want to get separated after all. You and the maid travel down the dimly lit hall, passing by the mirror once again. The light from the candle in the maid's hand, the only thing that reflected in it. The maid herself did not appear. Yes, I remember that she had no reflection. However, just as you were about to avert your eyes, I also remember that you, or me, I guess, also did not have any reflection. You thought you caught a glimpse way here. Oh? The silver haired girl is here? You heard a voice echo in the darkness, and when you turned to face the mirror again, the glass was the color of obsidian, as if it had been painted over. The voice seemed to be coming from beyond the mirror. The maid did not turn back, evidently having not heard anything. You, however. Ooh. Wow, this is like our second choice in the game. Extend your hand or avert your eyes. So. Hmm. Well, the two cases with the sewer hair girl was Mel. And Yukimasa. Both of them found um, peace and tranquility, serenity with the girl. But they also were brought to ruin. Hmm. Granted, Yukimasa and wasn't really related to the girl itself. If anything, she held it back for long for made it held back hold back for longer. I think I'm gonna avert the eyes. You averted your eyes. Up ahead, 
The maze candle flickered faintly. You found the dim orange more comforting than the all-consuming darkness. Now, that's interesting because that's the second choice we had the whole game. And this is what? Axel 13, I think? And so, you followed the maid's lead, returning to the living room. From there, you climbed a set of stairs, your hands sliding through the dust that had settled on the ebony railing. Standing at one end of the long corridor, you asked the maid, When was the mansion built? I would imagine you know more about that than me, master. <laughs> Yeah, I know. You have not yet regained your memories. Simply given you. I have been a servant of this house for many, many years. But the truth is, I do not know everything about it. All I know is that the mission is cursed, and that it has brought misfortune upon its residents. Since times of old. I can make a conjecture as to when it began. But I believe you should figure it out for yourself, Master. There is no guarantee my perspective is the correct one. Now, let us proceed. You and the maid travel down the dimly lit corridor. While the layout of the house was the same as in the eras of the flaxen haired boy and the beast, the bleak, colorless gloom felt incredibly dreary. On the wall, part way down the hall hung a painting. The painting, which depicted a beautiful landscape, was oddly entrancing. But you did not have time to appreciate the artwork. Your hand in the maze passed by the painting. Before long, a door came to sight at the end of the hall. This door is what I would like to show you next, Master. Listen closely. Do you hear the voices? Lively, but rough. Energetic, but coarse. Hopefully it's not those children that were laughing eh, before. What lies beyond this door, neither appeared of elegance and abundance like the first, nor one of ruin and savagery, savagery like the second. Technology and culture had become quite developed. Cameras and photography had been invented. It was a time of great progress and many breakthroughs. And for that reason, those who lived in it were constantly seeking to try new things. The tale I'm about to tell you is of a man who wagered everything on his ambitions. So who's gonna be our next protagonist? Hope that what you see, Master, will stir something in your heart. Now, to the door we go. Please do not let go of my hand. The maid pushed open the door. Colorful balls bounced around the top of a long, dark green table. One man, dressed in black, standing by the billiards table, turned towards the door. The room was inundated with eye-watering cigar smoke, causing you to squeeze your eyes shut. Now we're going to our next story. Since we had two chapters, I kind of get have an idea how of how things go, but who knows? Maybe they can throw me for a loop now that I'm starting to get an idea. So they're gonna throw a twist in there. Ooh. Okay. I did not expect this. But I'm down for it. The era was a red race of innovation and development. I'm jamming to this music. The smoke was so thick you could hardly see more than a few feet ahead of you. I can compare it to a dense morning fog. But that might give the impression of beauty. There was little death to be found in this haze. 
Do you see the silhouettes of several men in the smoky room? The one in the middle is the protagonist. The one looking in your direction, master, was the present master of the house. Oh, Jacopo. Okay, I see you. His name was Jacopo, and though he dressed in such fine attire, I sincerely doubt he understood how splendid the furnishings left in the mansion truly were. I am a faithful servant of this house, and I would not, for the life of me, dare speak ill of my master. However, this is a long time ago. He is no longer my master. I imagine God would be so kind as to turn a blind eye to a little bit of honesty. I was not terribly fond of my master back then. Really? I wonder what the reason behind that. He had wavy hair the color of over dried tea leaves, used to gaze, an arrogant smile, and he wore a hat that made him look rather haughty. He put his trust only in money, renown, and rank. He loved only the iron and steel that had revolutionized so many industries. He had not the slightest bit of love or care for other people. At the very least, that is what I believe the time. Hold on, I want to read that again. He put his trust only in money, renown, rank, loved only iron and steel, and did not the slightest bit of love and care for others. Yeah. Okay, I can see why she was not very fond of him, I guess. Take a look around the, the room, Master. Jacopo had remodeled, in, remodeled it into a recreation area. A billiard stable set in the center of the room, and the downward facing lights hanging from the ceiling were special made. The lights shone upon the dark green stand like a stage. Cigars and the bourbon lined glass cases all in place of bookshelves. The case were always fully stocked. Their contents available to partake of red room. At that particular moment, as he had many times before, Jacopo had invited several friends and acquaintances, and they were entertaining themselves. His wealthy, high ranking acquaintances had a variety of hair colors from polished brass to the brown of a baby robin to the color of a sunburnt wheat. But don't get it confused with anime characters. They don't have that rainbow of colors. There was also much greater variation in skin tone compared to the visitors and residents of previous eras. But that was hardly a surprise for the mansion set upon land inhabited largely by immigrants. The New World. What's the matter? What are you looking at? Oh, I need to come up with a voice for him. Nothing. I just thought I heard someone say my name. Ain't no one here. Ain't no one there. Lest you're seeing a ghost. I don't believe in such nonsense. It's an old house with a long history. Wouldn't be surprised if a ghost or two. But if the place gonna be haunted, I'd take a princess over a bloody road any day. A princess, huh? And when she showed up, you have your way with this ghost lady, am I right? Call her mean press, son. You jump her bones and she don't even got any jump. Come on now, that's hardly fair. Not much you can even do with a ghost. My god, are you men or children? This is my house, and I would rather you didn't talk about it like that. Just a blattering up a couple drunks. Pretends you didn't hear nothing. For the look. In any event, whatever happened to that printer you invested in? I haven't heard the name come up in some time. Can we please avoid the topic? It's been quite a headache for me. I thought I'd pay you off, but... It always sounded sketchy to me. I'd recommend you pull out unless you want to find yourself with nothing left but a nice, bad pile of death. You could have mentioned that beforehand. Ugh, 
This is killing me. Simmons' deep voices resonated in the cloudy room. I seen vivid alcohol and puff on their cigars and conversed mostly about business and money. Nicopo and the rest of the men were bringing no as investors. You might also call them practitioners. They survived on information attained before anyone else by making swift decisions and having foresight. Okay, I see how you can call that tactician. Though, instead of flesh and bones, their soldiers were made of ink and paper. To an outsider, this meeting might appear to be a congregation of friends, but in reality, they are observing one another, gathering information and anything else they could use to get ahead. At times, money and information were exchanged directly, and when they were no longer of financial value to one another, their relationship would pop like a bubble and this made into nothing. But you know, Jacobo, you can't be sure this rare world you're so passionate about is gonna bear fruit neither. You don't even know if you can finish. And even if they do connect the tracks, there will really be any shape for people to ride. It's a bike dream, I tell ya. This transcontinental railroad of yours. Jacobo went silent. Well, I'm certain this is what was going through his head. You're a bunch of damn imbeciles. You can't see that the entire country's put their weight behind this endeavor. This is why you have so much trouble making even a few thousand. At the time, a great railroad railway was being built across the breadth of the continent. Construction was spearheaded by two large rail companies competition for both prestige and a bigger share of this massive national enterprise. The Union Pacific Railroad Company started building from the east, and the Central Pacific Railroad Company from the west. But government bonds alone were not enough to finance the massive undertaking. By the way, there have been some less than pleasant reports about workers dying on the job for the company chose Central Pacific. Ah, uh, you mean how they are using explosive to blast through the mountains? Making quite a bang, they are. But if this gets much gets to be a much bigger of a fix, they're not gonna be able to continue construction. You should at least put your money in the more sure bet of the two. The Union Pacific. That'll cost you to hire replacement workers, and if they keep kicking the bucket, you're gonna have some trouble finding more. My goodness. And here I thought you all had spines. You think we're gonna run out of workers just because a few ate it? <laughs> There's so many we don't even know what to do with them all. There's not a chance that well will dry up. And if... By some chance, it does. All we have to do is buff a ship full of blacks or yellows. You won't get anywhere if you spend your time worrying about a few massly laborers. This is an endeavor backed by the entire nation. Their deaths are honorable in service of their country. The biggest loss is not of people's lives, but of time. The longer a project takes, the more money, and the less profit we make. What we seek is rapid progress. Even if the methods to obtain it are messy or deadly. The other men in the room chuckled uncom uncomfortably at Jacobo's distasteful choice of words. Do you agree with his way of thinking, Master? Perhaps he does have a point in that great sacrifice is necessary to accomplish great things. And it is true that tragedy often lies in the shadows of the splendor of times long past. Furthermore, the way people see the world changes with the times, so I hesitate to criticize him too severely. Now, as I'm sure you have already picked up on, he was an investor who had put money into a railroad company. 
He also possessed several crude oil refineries, riding on the world's second wave of industrial development. The mansion too bustled with life in a way never had before. Also, I'm just up to notice, I think on the first chapter there was like roses and stuff, and on this one we have the gears. I don't remember what we had on the second chapter. I, f I, I couldn't be imagining things for sure. I think like the background image for the dialogue, it's different for each chapter. Dozens of maids, including me, gardeners, chefs, sculptors, artists. At times, we even have writers coming in and out of the house. It was rarely a moment of silence. However, I was not terribly fond of the hustle and bustle personal. But please, do not get me wrong, I am hardly opposed to the mention being cheerful. It was just... how should I put it? The splendor of the time seemed... superficial, heartless. It was as though everyone was being rushed along by some unknown, invisible force. Part of it was, I expect, caused by the growing divide between those standing at the top and sitting at the bottom. Or perhaps the mansion was simply taking after its master. There's no time to waste. Everything's resting upon the success of this project. Whatever it takes, I'll ensure it happens. I need more money. And more power. Suddenly, after a strange knock on the door stopped his train of thought. Hey, the train? From beyond the door came a woman's voice. Gentle as a soft spring breeze. Pardon me, I have made some tea. May I offer anyone a cup? Oh, and look who it is. The silver haired girl. Every chapter she appears in, huh? But it seems like some reincarnation at times. Because. The one from the second chapter had no recollection from the story from the first. Even though she found the maid in the house familiar, she had a whole different story about living with her mother and everything instead of the father. And at the end of the second chapter, she was killed. So, who is this standing before us? When the door opened, in it stood a beautiful white beautiful woman with pure white hair. It was indeed her. Are you surprised? Uh, not much. Or did you anticipate her appearance? Sure did. Though she was not the same age and dressed differently, the white-haired girl whom you saw fall into the hands of misfortune in the air of roses and the area of beasts was also present in the era of innovation. Okay, so that these are the names. The era of roses, the era of the beasts, and the era of innovation. Furthermore, she was Jacob's wife. Oh. I thought she was a maid, but a wife, huh? Me? I don't recall asking for that. When were you asked to make it? wasn't, but I had these leaves with the most wonderful aroma that I thought you might enjoy. Not your trap and know your place. What do you think we have all these maids for? Hey now, no need to treat your lady like that. You're just trying to be gorgeous. These are my, my personal affairs. Please keep your comments to yourself. His friends were unsure how to react. But ultimately, nobody stepped up to stop Jacobo. They merely shrugged, tossing glances at one another. Jacobo stomped over to the white-haired girl. He then grabbed her by the arm and dragged her from the den. What the hell do you think you're doing? I told you time and time again. To stay away from that room unless absolutely necessary. 
I'm sorry. But, uh, big tea and shut up about the tea already. You think we're having tea parties and there are like a bunch of crazy nobles? I'm sorry. You really feel so bad. Don't go in there in the first place. Get the hell back to your room. I meant no harm. It's just... I'm your wife. I thought it would be nice if I could do something. Like I told you, that's not your job. Don't show yourself in front of other men. What? I have nothing else to say to you. Got it? Now scrimp. Thanks a lot. First stem. Now you. Drive me up the wall. What is it? I told you to get out of here. Right. But, um... What? When will you spend time with me next? It has been some time since we last went out together. Uh, we don't even ha have to go out. Who's having dinner together would... How many times are you gonna make me repeat myself, you worthless shrimp? Are those ears only for show? Go back to your goddamn room. My apologies. Looking utterly downtrodden, the white hair girl made her departure. And if they wanted to make me not like Jacobo, they managed that. Such a piteous sight she was. As he watched her go, Jacobo merely snorted. Just thinking about the way he behaved that then angers me. I understand you. I comprehend it perfectly. I have a little fondness for men who do not treat their spouses with respect. Very understandably. Though, as you can see, the white hair girl was in hardly a joyous situation. She was devoted to Jacobo and tried to do whatever she could for him. But he not only brushed her aside, he did so in an insulting, deliberately hurtful manner. They were far from picturesque partners. Do you wonder then, Master, why she married him? The answer to that question will come to light in time. For now, let us follow her. But that's... something. We're gonna find out next time. So we finished the second chapter finally. And now we start the third chapter with the era of innovations. Our new protectors, Jacobo. And the silver haired girl is already in the picture. Quite fast, if I do say so. It took her a while to show up in both of the other stories, but in this one, it was almost immediate. As for the end of the Heir of the Beast, well, it ended with Yukimasa going on a rampage and massacre, as I pointed out. Of course, it was even bigger than, than I thought, as it wasn't just the people in the manor attacking the manor, but the village as well. As they took the serenity from him, his anchor. There was nothing to keep him being human anymore. And he went full on on becoming a beast. But now we have this new chapter. With Jacobo and his fellow investors. As he's investing on the transcontinental train. And doesn't care about other people, be it his close friends, the laborers, or even his wife. So this is gonna be quite a story to take in. But that is something that we'll have next time. So with that being said, see you next time. Bye!